Coder it's me Unchained Soul of Disaster Please please do not read the new Unchained cards please <laughs> Stop dude Stop that's not cool That is not cool <laughs> That is So not cool <laughs>Good afternoon, Jank Enthusiasts! I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. I can hear you shouting from behind the screen like so many Chalamet haters. Dune's a flop! You say it wasn't enough to stop Kashtira, and all it did was bring back a deck that was already crazy and pearly. Well, like the desert world for which the set is named, there lie untold riches in the sands of this set list. All you have to be willing to do is sift through the rough and polish the diamonds. Today, we're examining one such diamond in Unchained. So here's the list, and Coder, you can stop salivating now. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is the number one place to go if you need a pack simulator, a card database, or want to read a wealth of strategy articles. They also post breakdowns and lists from every major TCG and Master Duel tournament, including the Master Circuit Series. Give them a look at www.ygopro. D -E -C -K dot com. With that, let's draw the dog. Unchained is an archetype that's been kind of playable since its inception, consisting of three twins, don't ask, a garnet, and a payoff. These cards have been paired with just about anything that destroys as they all float into each other when they're popped. After summoning several, you can make their link monsters, which allow you to link summon using your opponent's cards, an effect that decks still aren't often able to handle. Just look at how often people get got by the white woman jump scare. Unfortunately, despite consistent rogue playability, they never had the metal for meta. The setup was too telegraphed, the interaction too inflexible, and the archetype so reliant on the playability of blind second tools to ever really pop up. Until now! Three new cards, the Unchained Souls of Sharvara, Shayama, and Yama, are just what the deck needed to hang with the big boys. Like the red and blue twins, the red soul can pop a card while in hand to special summon itself, and the blue soul can pop a card while on the field. The new Link monster searches any Unchained monster, and can plus to near infinity whenever anyone pops anything. Importantly, it's also generic, meaning a whole host of powerful playmakers like Tour Guide can finally arrive at the Underworld. Finally, this deck's like the Thelonious Monk of Rogue, it's more about the cards the deck's not playing. We can finally cut the Unchained Soul of Dog Shit. So with that, let's get into the card by card. First up, three copies of Unchained Soul of Sharvara. During the main phase, if this card is in your hand, quick effect, you can target a fiend monster or a face down card you control, destroy it, and if you do, special summon this card, but while it's face up in the monster zone, you can't special summon monsters except for fiends. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can set one Unchained Spell Trap directly from your deck. You can only use each effect once per turn. Next up, Unchained Soul of Shiyama. You can target one card you control, destroy it, then destroy one spell trap on the field. If this card is in your graveyard, you can target a fiend to monster or a face down card control, destroy it, and if you do, special summon this card, but put it on the bottom of the deck when it leaves the field. Both hard onces as well. Three copies of Arua. Target a card you control. You can't special summon monsters for the rest of the turn, except fiends. Destroy the targeted card, and if you do, special summon this card from your hand. If this card is destroyed by card effect, except by Arua's, or by battle, you can special summon an unchained monster from your hand or deck, except itself. And one a piece of Sarama, which can target an unchained card in your graveyard, set it to your field, then destroy a card you control, and floats as do the others. Rakea, which has a quick effect ability to target a card you control, destroy it, and you can't special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except fiend monsters and floats, and Abominable Unchained Soul. You can only special summon Abominable Unchained Soul once per turn. If a card you control is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can special summon this card from your hand, and if special summoned, you can discard a card, destroy a card on the field. Once per turn during the end phase, if this card is in the graveyard because it was destroyed on the field and sent there this turn, you can special summon this card, but it goes to the bottom of the deck when it leaves the field. Finally, we've got three copies of Tour Guide from the Underworld and one Fiendish Rhino Warrior, which prevents fiend monsters you control from being destroyed by battle or card effects, and if sent to the graveyard can send a feed monster from your deck to the graveyard except itself. For the spells, we're on three copies of Abomination's Prison. This adds an unchained card from your deck to your hand, and if destroyed by a card effect while set, allows you to special an unchained monster from your deck. Wailing of the Unchained Souls, if you link summon an unchained link monster, allows you to target a card on the field and destroy it, and like the previous one, floats into a monster. To a piece of Escape of the Unchained, which floats and targets an unchained monster you control and a card on the field and destroys both, and Abominable Chamber of the Unchained, which allows you to special an unchained monster from your hand or graveyard and floats. Finally, for the Dawn Engine, we're on three Ash Blossom, three Droll and Lockbird, two Nibiru, triple Pot of Prosperity, triple Book of Moon, Called by the Grave, and three Infinite Impermanence. In the extra, we're on Divine Arsenal, double A Zeus, Sky Thunder, the DD 
Stone King Darius Suite. This card is accessible, which means you can overlay for DDD Wave High King Caesar, which is sort of a summon negate, and DDD Divisor King Machinex when you just have to hit hard. Underworld Goddess of the Closed World, Unchained Abomination, Access Code Talker, Double Unchained Soul of Anguish, Nightmare Unicorn, two copies of Unchained Soul Lord of Yama, which can be made with two fiend monsters, and if special summon adds an Unchained Monster from your deck or graveyard to your hand, and if a card you control is destroyed by battle or card effect, allows you, while this card is in your graveyard, to banish it and special summon a fiend monster from your hand or grave, then destroy a card you control, two copies of Rage, and one McCracker from the underworld. In the side, we've got DD Crows, we've got Dark Rulers, we've got Cosmic, we've got Evenly Matched, and we've got Dimensional Barrier. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against Vanquished Soul, and this deck just got top four at Worlds, so it has to be good, right? We're going first, and this game kind of showcases the bread and butter combos of the deck. We're going to begin with a copy of Sarama. We'll trigger the effect of Red Dog in our hand in order to summon itself. We'll trigger the effect of the Sarama in order to get a copy of Blue Dog, and then we'll make a copy of Lord of Yama. We'll trigger the Doge's effect here in order to grab a trap, and Lord of Yama's in order to grab an Arua. We'll trigger the effect of the Arua in hand, popping the trap that we just set in order to trigger its effect and summon another Arua from deck. From here, we can activate the effect of Blue in Graveyard to get itself, and Arua's effect to get another copy of Red. That's two sixes, so we can make High King Caesar. Afterwards, we're going to go into a copy of Unchained Soul of Rage, set a card, and pass back to our opponent. Pretty low stakes, but pretty good given we have two ashes in hand, one of which will deploy on the raisin. Afterwards, we'll go to the battle phase and crash with our Unchained Soul of Rage. I am very happy to make that trade until I see the Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion, which means what you see is what you get on field. We draw a chamber, which is sort of something. It does mean we're going to have to pass back to our opponent, but I'm feeling pretty good. Small World is going to fiend the other Ash Blossom, and then afterwards we're going to go ahead and normal summon a copy of Dr. Mad Love. That's going to grab a continue. They will Dust Devil to contest the Wave High King Caesar, and I'm thinking, uh-oh. Down comes Heavy Borger. We're going to chain Abominable Chamber, and then a point of resolution. They'll draw off the Heavy Borgor, but we'll chain the effect of Unchained Soul of Rage in order to take their monster and make Anguish. From here, they've drawn a card and just the worst one to draw into because they're already locked. They're going to go for continue, but thankfully we have the Called by the Grave to contest it, and they'll pass. From here, it's just a matter of flipping our our monster back up, going to the battle phase and getting in for a lethal amount of damage. Despite how this deck is played in the past, I don't think it's worth blind seconding with this strategy, but that's not to say that it doesn't have impressive tools to pick apart already established boards. Case in point, my opponent here is playing Punk Pride. So they're going to begin with a copy of Foxy Tune to go into Ziyaman, and then normal summon a Sharakusai, activating its effect and paying 600 to make Rising Carp. From here, they're going to go Rising Carp into a Wagon and a Deer Note Wagon in order to grab the Field Spell, and then they will go ahead and activate Extreme Session before they Synchro Summon Dragon Drive. That's going to cost them another 6, and obviously net them a draw as well. They're going to cycle back this Foxy Tune and grab a card. From here, they can activate Extreme Session to draw and go into Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord before bringing out a Madam Spider. That's going to grab a Dangerous Gabu before activating the effect of Extreme Session to draw again. It's a Foxy Tune. We'll cycle for that and then go for an Instant Fusion to make Alvane and end on a Baron to Fleur. Now it's time to go for the Pride half of the deck. We're going to go Ogre Dance and then afterwards go for the effect of the Captain Carry in hand, activating her effect in order to grab a Start Your Engines. They will pass turn and this is a lot to chew through, uh, but the Imperm probably means we can. We're going to go Imperm on this Baron de Fleur, and then we will go for Red Dog. They will negate with Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord, which is frustrating, but hardly the end of the world because we have so many names now. Arua will pop the back row. We can trigger the effect of the Arua and the Abominable Unchained Soul here. We'll go for the Abominable Unchained Soul, and that will fiend out the Dangerous Gabu. We have so much material on our side of the field. We'll go for Sharava in order to set this copy of Wailing. We are going to activate the effect of Blue in order to get this Arua off the field and go into Rakaya. Flip up Wailing. Our opponent realizes we're about to pick off the remainder of their board, and they'll concede. So it's time for Game 3, and you know what that means. A best of three versus meta. Our opponent's playing Pearly, and ugh, this is kind of a weird position to be in. We're going second, and we've opened to Book of Moon, which is incredible, obviously, but that cash tier of Fenrir in hand means that we have to decide if we're going to let them get a bunch of draws off of something like a Noir and potentially contest the cards in their hand, hoping they don't draw into powerful hand traps, or we're going to just have to fall victim to the cash tier of Fenrir on field. It's uh, kind of a no-win situation. Here they're going to go for a Pot of Prosperity after resolving the effect of My Friend Pearly, and they have two copies of Sleepy. They're going to go Sleepy. Sleepy one in order to grab a Pearlily, activate the effect of the Pearlily in order to grab from deck to hand a stray Pearly Street, and then afterwards trigger the effect of the Pearlily in order to go into a Noir. From here, they'll activate Sleepy Memory, not activating the summon effect to set a copy of Pearlip, and then at end step, they'll equip the third Sleepy from deck. In standby, they will draw one, two, three cards, and I think we do probably have to activate the Book of Moon here on activation of the Leap in order to prevent them from going into X Pearly Noir. We can Book of Moon to set down the Fenrir, and I'm feeling okay, unfortunately 
Unfortunately, my opponent does have two hand traps and grip. We'll go for escape here for the Sharvara, and then we'll go for a Wailing of the Unchained Souls to go into Lord of Yama. That allows us to chain block everything and also contest one of their cards, but unfortunately, chain blocking doesn't matter in the face of Ghost Mourner and Moonlit Chill. We get to set a trap. This Prosby has to be really good, and luckily for us, it is. We find off the top a... <laughs> oh, the search spell. But into Droll and Lockbird, this isn't going to be sufficient. So we'll set it and pass back to our opponent. They will flip back up this Fenrir, and okay, let's just go next. So it's time for game two, and... Oh, we've drawn one of the very few hands that does combo, but needs the opponent to not have exactly Ash Blossom. We're going to go for the A-Bomb Prison. They're going to fire off the Ash Blossom, and that's going to be all she wrote for this opener. Let's set two and hope for the best. Our opponent draws for turn. Uh, they're going to go for a pretty memory here. They'll gain a thousand, we'll gain a thousand, and they'll summon a Pearl Lily. They'll activate the effect of the Pearl Lily. That's going to grab from deck two hand a copy of my friend. They'll proceed to main phase and activate the effect of the Pearl Lily, targeting the pretty memory, and they'll try to start eating back row. Let's go for my friend. That will be prompted with the Abominable Chamber, and that will be hit with the Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion. Oh boy. Okay, well, Beauty here will suck up the last remaining card. They're going to go to the battle phase, attack in for 16, then main phase two. They will make Downard and then Zeus. Unfortunately, this card sends, which means we are out of luck. So we're back with the deck, and though it is frustrating that this deck has a particularly bad time against cards like Zeus and X Pearly Noir, I think losing to the best deck in the room is a decent place to be. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, the new support adds a one-card combo to the mix. Tour Guide is full combo off of a singular card, allowing you to play a relatively hefty selection of non-engine. That, alongside a plethora of two-card combos, gives the deck a fairly consistent avenue to setting up completely on turn one. Two, access to powerful Xyz monsters. The new combo ends on the huge mega threat that is Wave High King Caesar, providing two interrupts added onto the three or four interrupts that Unchained was already putting out. That, and easy access to Machinex and Zeus, gives the deck a powerful toolbox outside of its engine. And three, the deck is naturally talented at going second, with the mechanics of the deck built around destruction, so your opponent's interrupts will often turn into your extension. And the cons. One, the deck is quite sensitive to hand traps, as you saw in game two of our best of three. A well-timed Ash, Imperm, or Bell can lower the ceiling of the deck quite heavily, with it often struggling to find extenders it needs to put up a competitive board through one or two interrupts on turn one. Two, indestructible monsters can be a problem. Most of your engine interruptions are destruction-based, so pseudo-towers can really put a stop to your game plan. And three, being hit with non-destruction removal is devastating for the deck, hindering your recovery and bypassing your monster's most prominent benefit. Overall, it looks like the dogs are ready for their time in the spotlight, with a good chance of it being one of the more popular rogue decks of the format. Thanks so much for watching. A huge shout out to all of my patrons, but specifically Alex Perea, Allison Elliott, Ben Mizera, Brett Henry, Bizen Queen, Chaotic Meatball, Kristen Malone, Da Bears, Darkmaster Zork, Derp and Dragon, DJ Elephant, Executive Slifer, Gabe the Green, John Piet, Jordan Kuntz, King Magic Ruler, Knight Mary, Legal Rights, Lockstone, Luis Hernandez, Materiality, Matthew M. DeRezzo, MBT Play Medolce, Melfi Stan, Mike Carlotti, NH6574, Puffins of Doom, Rose Lapine, Solar Flare, The Hollow King, Tootsie, Troy Says Buy Erasure is Gay, Vincent Storm, Who's Nick, Wonderwaffle, Yuki, and Yor. I couldn't have done it without you.